Do the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Are bestsellers all they're cracked up to be? Here at Terrible Book Club, we explore whether you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. You ever passed a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Episode 30 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm Paris, and this is Chris. Hello, Paris. Oh, man, you sound sleepy. I am sleepy. We just woke up to do this early, you know, getting getting our stuff in before we have other things to do during our Memorial Day. It's supposed to be a vacation, but it's not. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of taking it as a vacation day. This is the only, like, work I have to do today. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I got it easy. Chris is, I don't know, Chris has too many things going on. Yeah, so we uh, did, like, something different for this one. I read a thing, but you did not read the thing. Correct. Um, I read a book called Chakra Crystals by Kate Tomas. <laughs> and it's about using crystals to help with your chakras. It's pretty self-explanatory, I'd imagine. And it's a pretty short, it's like a little, not like a coffee table thing, it's like a tiny square of a book. The font's pretty large, it's like 200 pages, so I carved through it in like an hour and a half. And, uh, I mean, not like there's much to this book, if I'm being honest with you. Oh, jeez, okay. Supposedly, I, I, I pulled it from, uh, once again, the uh, pile of books I, I had for the, my music video that my band did, and it just seemed like a good one to uh, carve through for a terrible book club thing. Uh, turns out... Uh, crystals can apparently heal you with literally anything. They have what? the power to heal pretty what? much anything. Wait, then what... why Then why are people not just, like, bathing in vats of crystals all the time? Well, I mean, you know, that you should ask the author of this book because she <laughs> well, seems to proselytize about the effectiveness of many kinds of different crystals, and boy, are there so many different kinds. Yeah. This book supposedly yeah. came with, like, seven ones, but obviously that wasn't there because I bought this from, like, a used library oh, wait, section. Oh, no, dude, the funniest part is... So, the, the way this episode ended up happening was because we were like, oh, we should do an extra episode. Let's do some short stuff. And, you know, we were talking about, oh, let's make sure the things we read are, like, in Kindle and physical so we can each have a copy at the same time. And, of course, the first thing we pick does not have a kindle version so uh that's why we came up with this ridiculous game episode uh okay. when, I, when, yeah, I went so... on, when i went on amazon to check out this chakra crystals book uh there were only a couple of, review of reviews and they were all negative and i was like oh sweet but then i read them and the reason they were negative is because the book didn't come with the crystals and people were pissed <laughs> mm. they were that's pretty funny yeah because no, it, they didn't it, get it, their it, crystals in the book many times it's like take the seven crystals that are packaged with this book and you know do this weird thing with them yeah so, so i'm gonna like uh give you a little game here the, of describing uh, giving you maybe like two truths and a lie or like one made up thing one real thing about how to use your crystals yeah and or i could see. yeah or i could also just what i what i was thinking is like i could just guess like uh what they're what they mean right because all these crazy crystal people think that like certain stones are for certain things yeah uh i mean there's a whole lot of different stones that uh seem to line up with the, the okay so i guess i'll start this by saying that there, there's an element to this book that's about like chakras which is like an uh, an older indian uh, i think maybe hindu sort of idea about sort of like energy balances in your own body kind of like um, humors like when people used to believe in yeah in and like honestly that part of it seems like you know fine to me like it seems that stuff is mostly about learning how to balance certain mental aspects of yourself or like trying to think about how certain mental aspects work um i mean that sounds so, fine it just sounds like a i don't know psychology in a different dress i guess like it doesn't sound sure. that weird uh, i mean but apparently they're positioned in certain areas uh 
I'll, I'll run you through the these ones. I won't make you guess the, the chakras okay. here, but apparently right. there is uh, there are seven of them. Apparently, oh, I'm getting a leg up. Chris is being generous. I'm gonna get the chakras explained to me. Okay, I go. couldn't I couldn't make a joke out of this honestly, like because I, I it just didn't seem correct. But but apparently there are seven. Um, there is the base chakra, the sacral is chakra. Is that in my the, butt? Uh, kind of. It's okay. at the base of your spine. The sac- sacral, sacral. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Mm-hmm. That one's at like just below your navel, apparently. Then you have a it's solar uterus. Ple- All right, sweet. Yeah, yeah. You got a uterus one. You got a solar plexus one. You got a heart one. You have a throat chakra, a brow chakra, and a crown chakra. All right, there's a lot of chakras in my head, apparently. That seems Uh, like a little congested, considering the feet and the legs and the arms got no love from these chakras. Well, yeah, apparently that's just the big... Are those, like, are the real estate prices just too high in the legs and arms? Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they, They you know, your your legs just don't have that much energy. But how about, here's the game, and I'll play with you. I'll, what do you, I'll ask you what you think each of these chakras is based around. Some of them have, like, an elemental affinity oh, and there's the like certain physical or mental aspects <laughs> okay, so i'll give okay. you i'll the give one. you the first one i'll give you the first one and we can ask you about the other one the okay. base chakra no is, i was gonna say that it has to be associated with wind it's in my butt no no <laughs> what, what do you think the base chakra is is associated with wind yes because it's in my butt no apparently it's Damn associated it. with earth and physical oh. identity survival and basic instincts so you, I, your I mean, your butt chakra is about like your basic survival skills. Apparently, I can see that. Okay, I get the earth because you know you you sit on your butt on the earth, right? And like, yeah, sure. if you're okay, if you're scared and running away, uh, yeah, you might poop I guess your pants or something. Yeah, I don't you, know. maybe you poop yourself. Um, but I guess I guess I'm thinking of the the phrase like. You know, kick yourself in the ass or kick your, get a kick in the butt to like propel yourself forward. So sure, yeah. So what do you th- so what do you think the sacral chakra is about? Is what that is the the navel affinity? one in my uterus? I mean, it's got to be about women shit, right? It's got to be like nurturing and I don't know, like life growth energy. Kind uh, of, green it's about crea- is its color. I don't know. I'm guessing. It's about creativity in all forms, sexuality, and general energy levels. It's associated with water, apparently. Mm, okay, yeah. Yeah, your your womb's pretty watery. That makes sense. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, that's... Oh. How, about the solar, how about the solar plexus chakra? What do you, oh, what do you think that... Oh, that's got to be, like, intellect, like, yellow has to do with the sun, maybe? Shrug? Kind? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's associated with fire. Okay. And apparently the it's sun about, is fire. I, the sun is literally a giant ball of fire. So that's it, I was it's right. It's about <laughs> identity and power and self ex, ex, well, self definition rather. Okay. So that's about like I guess knowing what you're all about. How about okay. the heart chakra? I mean, well, you already said the uh, the vagina sock chakra was about sexuality. So this one's got to be like romance and relationships and your health, maybe. Sure. Social identity, Red. love, and self-acceptance yeah, associated with air. Mm. Which I think is weird okay. because if there's seven things here and there's all different elements, maybe the heart one should have been heart to like line up with the Captain Planet. Oh my god, yeah. And then and then when you finally meditate with all your stones correctly, you are Captain Planet. And that's what happens. Like Yeah, one with the world and you have to help the Planeteers. That's the only downside. Oh god, I, haven't, I haven't seen that since I was a kid and I loved that show. And it makes sense, you know... Um, in terms of my life trajectory, I guess. Uh. Yeah. Okay, here we go. We're almost done here. Uh, okay, all right. The, this one's interesting to me. The throat chakra. What do you what, what do you think this one's about? Well, clearly, I have to get me some stones and meditate on my throat chakra because I'm a singer. So I'm going to say it's like... Oh, fuck. Wait, you already said there was one for creativity. Um, This one's for communication. Uh, Co- correct. Oh, indeed, sweet. Co- indeed, correct. It's about self-expression, and it's associated with sound, which I guess is an element now. <laughs> you know what? I mean, we're already on this crazy roller coaster of chakras in this fucking theme park of bullshit science. So, pseudoscience. Uh, and then there's the brow chakra, which uh, is that one like that about one? makeup? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, no, what? this one is about. Clarity of vision, perception, and thought. And oh man, you gotta work on that one. Yeah, I know. It, Maybe it, if you it, just well, hold a stone to your brow, you can like fix your vision or whatever. Uh, hilariously, that is actually recommended. Oh in my this god! Book. Yes. Oh no! 
Oh, it so says it's like you you can, you, you can fix your vision problems if you meditate with oh, your brow chakra focus associated make sense. with light. And finally, we have the crown chakra. Give mm. give us a good guess here, Paris. Uh, spirituality, Godhead. Uh, yeah, actually, exactly right. It, yep. it, that's a, that's like your like top one is associated with like your connection to like the astral plane and like higher beings and your spirituality. Dude, all this so, tells me is that I could just create a manual like this and put a fake esoteric sounding name on it and create my own religion in like two. Steps. Look, man, I am ninety percent sure that is what is going on in this book because. Yeah. Well. Well. Okay. So. Oh, before we move on to guess, guessing what the crystals mean, I did a little bit of research on Kate Thomas or Tomas, the lady who wrote this book, and I was very surprised to find that she is a doctor of philosophy and a lecturer at Oxford University. And I was like, I'm sorry, excuse me, what? <laughs> like, this person is an academic and intelligent? That's surprising. Um, and she offers her intuitive readings for $250 an hour. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Man, I gotta get on this crystal game. Yeah, and you can send her a single question by email and she'll answer it for $125. What if my question is, can I email you? I don't know, man. She'll be like, yeah, 125, (laughs) please. Um, Shit. Yeah, and uh, she also, it seems like her biggest business, strangely, is corporate consultation. So she gets hired by big firms, apparently, uh, to I don't know cast fucking witchcraft on their opposition like I I don't understand <laughs> like like and it was weird because one of the one of the reviews by some un, you know like, oh name redacted for secrecy this company this guy from this company was like Kate is so professional and she gives these really great presentations so professionally to the board and 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 I'm like. Like, imagine being a shareholder or a member of a board and you go in and, like, some other person at your company is like, all right, and today we're going to have this fucking whack job tell us about how (laughs) the planets have aligned for our next project and how we can defeat fucking Company B by holding up crystals. Like, what? how does this work? I don't understand. Well, like, the the middle section of this book is, like, guided meditations based around, like, holding a certain type of crystal in your hand while Mm -hmm. you, like, think about a certain thing. A lot of this book seems to, it it harps on intention matters. Basically, as long as you have the correct intention, if if you have the correct intention, while you're holding a crystal, it will work how you want. Uh, we'll get to this in a second because there's the next three sections of guessing I'm about to, to give you are uh, my favorite parts here. Okay. So first of all, uh, I want to ask you about how you think you... Because you have to choose a crystal for yourself because apparently some crystals don't work with certain people and even like the same type might not necessarily work with you. It might like be down to like a shape that works for you best for you and uh, you should be able to just feel it. A lot of this is like you should just be able to feel it, man. You'll just know when this stuff works. So I'm gonna okay. Ask- so is it so is this like uh, like food groups? Like I have favorite foods and I'm like allergic to some foods. So am I like allergic to some rocks? Is that what it's saying? Possibly. Okay. Uh, okay. So here. Okay. She has a, a method for choosing crystals, and I'm going right. to give you a, a couple, a handful of options on how you, like, you know, multiple choice on how to choose crystals that are personally good for you. And you tell me which one you think is the real one okay. that she advocates for, oh, okay? God. All right. So, option A. Uh, scanning for a crystal by uh, she's assuming you're walking into like a crystal shop here, and there's like a bunch of crystals around you. Okay. Yep. You can either. Uh, wave your hand over them and see which one gives you the most uh, feeling. Uh, Option two is closing your eyes and moving your eyeballs around and then choosing the crystal that you're looking at when you open your eyes. Uh, Option three is making a deck of cards with the names of kinds of crystals on them, shuffling it up and just drawing from the deck. So, uh, Okay, I think the, I think the second one is fake. Uh, you think? Do you think the second one is fake and the other ones are real? Yeah. Uh, they're all real, actually. Oh, she God damn it! All of them. God damn it! No. <laughs> but all of these are pretty much. <laughs> I, I, I tricked you there because all of these are pretty much just like, yeah, just wave your hand in front of it and you'll know, or yeah. just open your eyes and that's the one. It's. I mean, totally like, r- why not just pick one that you think is pretty then, right? It's like, oh, that one's yeah. shiny, sparkly. Yeah, that one's the, pink. It, 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 okay. it might as well be that because, but she talks about it as if like, oh no, the crystal will draw a, you towards it because another thing I didn't mention quite yet because this is the craziest part of this thing. It's like the first part of 
the book, Kate Tomas posits that crystals are living beings. Uh, like and they that, maybe have microorganisms in them because they haven't been washed appropriately. No, no, she thinks that they are their own special class of living being with the, with their own. I don't know even if they have the intentions because later on in this book she talks about dedicating and programming your crystals. <laughs> Plug in the USB to the back of the crystal. <laughs> Load the run file. Um, so, okay, so, so, so this... All wait, right, so wait, you, there's a, hold on a second, because there's no. a difference... <laughs> okay, no, what do you want to say, because... Fuck it, all right. This lady has a doctorate. She is not a stupid woman. She clearly is just preying on idiots. She is clearly just making shit up. I, it I mean, has to be that. There's no way that she actually believes in this shit, because, like... Did you know it just did a cursory googling looked at her twitter whatever no this lady teaches at oxford she's not a fucking quack she just markets the quackery because apparently it makes her money and maybe i don't know i also think that you know being a doctor of philosophy like having read things like being in time and feeling like my brain was shattering i think maybe just the study of philosophy can make you become a little unhinged over time uh so maybe I don't know. because there's a lot of stuff uh, for like somebody said, with her pedigree this is just very surprising it is uh okay so let me talk to you about dedicating and programming your crystals which are two different things oh god uh, so you know when you have crystals like they can be they have powerful energy in them and mm -hmm. you know they can be used for wrong stuff as well as good stuff because apparently. they're alive uh, yeah, and so you when you once you get a crystal, you want to dedicate it so that it can only be used for good. And how do you think you do that, Paris? Okay, wait. So you so you have to like brainwash your living crystal into only <laughs> obeying your do your life. Yeah, that, see, that's the thing that I was thinking about. <laughs> the if they're fuck? living beings, yeah. and you're like taking their will away by doing up. something. But but here's how you dedicate a crystal, Paris. All right, you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. You hold it in your hand and you say the following. I dedicate you to be used with loving energies only. That's it. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, does it, wait, so I have other questions. Like, does she think just rocks are living beings or like other inanimate objects? Like, could I just hold a fork and be like, no, I dedicate you to only eat healthy food? And that's, no. <laughs> like, and that, that's going to solve my dieting problems for the rest of my life. <laughs> no, it's because crystals are, their atomic structure is extremely regular, and that's why they work and are alive. No way! Is her, that is not... No, just no. That's, there have that's been her so reasoning. Many, there have been so many practical and... Um, like practical exper basic experiments about crystal healing and shit um, and, and it's all been proven fake I mean not to mention all the um, all of the people who practice this crystal healing shit like everybody has different interpretations of what the rocks mean and stuff and it's not as simple as like oh well you know doctors have different method no doctors can all agree that like the heart pumps blood throughout the body you know like all the <laughs> basic things are agreed upon but with this crystal healing bullshit it's like people think i don't know like some people think quartz is for fucking astral projection and some people think it's like for health or whatever well I don't know. there's, just there's different kinds of quartz and like clear quartz is for your brow chakra because Ugh. it's the godliest of all crystals and the clearest and therefore it can open your mind up the most and green quartz is like for your heart i think i don't know i didn't really memorize what stone goes with what because that didn't seem like the fun part of this okay um, wait do you have more games for me involving crystals and chakras what happened do you have more games for me involving crystals yes i do uh Excellent. first i want to talk because we just did dedicate and then there's programming your crystals oh, yeah. dedicating is in. making sure that your crystal can't be used for evil and programming is uh asking the crystal in a very specific way to work or achieve a particular aim and you do that by uh, holding the crystal in your hand or putting your hand above the crystal and then mentally or out loud asking that crystal work with you in a particular way. Continue to repeat your request until you feel the crystal has understood. Wow. Um, I just realized you could pretty easily debunk the whole dedication thing because you could be like... I dedicate you to only do good things. Then I could take it out of your hand and smash it into your face. <laughs> and nothing would stop me. Nothing would stop me from smashing that rock into your stupid face. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> there's not much to... Okay, so the last little game here is that apparently before you have to meditate with your crystals, you have to cleanse them. Oh, God. Because oh, wait, you so don't you want give them a bath. Dirty... They're alive, right? Like, you don't, you know, they yeah, you don't want, you don't want your dirty, dirty crystals messing with your spiritual chakra energy. Okay. Um, and there's 
five different ways to well more than five technically but there you can cleanse them with the five different elements which are earth fire air water and spirit which sadly it wasn't heart which i was really disappointed wait what about in, but... sound didn't we establish earlier in this book that sound no was that element? no we can't we can't cleanse with sound or light apparently <sighs> it's only earth fire air water and spirit but my game for you is i'm going to make you guess a couple of times how, how you get, uh, cleanse things with each of the element so, uh, how do you think you cleanse things with a uh, f- the fire element? How do you cleanse crystals with fire? I mean, put them in a fire? Like, yep, yeah, you just stick the crystal in a fire for a like second. Like, turn your stove on, put a crystal on it, watch the magic happen. Uh, she, she wants you to light a candle that, oh, by the way, you can only use this candle for cleansing crystals. If you use it for anything else, then it's not going to cleanse the crystal right. So, if there's a hurricane, I can't use it to see. Like, if I have yeah. no electricity, I'm just fucked. Blind. No, that's your that's your crystal cleansing candle, and you just right. apparently she says without burning your fingers, pass the crystal through the flame. What and if that's you burn you your cl- fingers? Does that invalidate the cleanse? I guess I don't know. She just says don't do it. I'm just imagining someone like in their kitchen with some tongs, like holding rocks over there. <laughs> their stove and it's she, just she also says image. like please don't use any uh, crystals or rocks with metal that are part of them when you do this because they will burn the shit out of you when you hold them again <laughs> well at least she warns people not to be burned that's all that's right a uh, how about the uh water element how do you cleanse a crystal with the water element fill up your bathtub put the rocks in <laughs> don't even have to go that far just stick it in a cup of water <laughs> oh my god Oh, wow. Which is, is like, apparently different from a later thing that she describes, which is making crystal elixirs. In oh, which, geez. You drink rock water? Yeah, you soak yeah. a crystal in water overnight, and you don't drink the cup of water. You take drops of it at a time. Four drops over a day, apparently, is what you drink. And depending on what rock you put in there, its effects will be different depending on, you know, which particular rock you use for what particular effect. So but don't the- use... Sorry, don't I was don't don't use water soluble crystals because those will disintegrate. Well, yeah, and I'm just thinking, you know, what if what if somebody gets a rock and like I don't know from some weird area doesn't wash it and there's like fucking parasites and then they they just lose their mind or develop some weird disease because oh, well that's I mean hey you should have dedicated that crystal before you did that to yeah, only be true. used for good stuff or else that's that's what that's for so is this some kind of weird form of homeopathy or whatever uh, it sounds I guess like it because. So. Homeopathy is usually like, oh, we've the more we dilute it, the more effective it is, even though that's the opposite of how that works uh, in terms yeah, of okay. chemistry. Um, so, so how about the air element? What, what do you, how do you think you cleanse things with the air element? Uh, do you like light some incense and like waft the incense over it or like just wait till it's really breezy and hold it up outside? Like, I don't know. You're very close. Apparently, uh, you can you can either light some white sage and like oh yeah sage. spread the white sage right. smoke around the crystal, or you can just blow on it three times really hard. <laughs> wow, I've I shouldn't have, been, shouldn't have been drinking yeah. coffee there. Yeah. Whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you can. I'm sorry. Was this constant? No, this is programming. No, this is cleansing. This is cleansing. Okay, so I can cleanse something by just going. <laughs> three times you actually just perfectly did the uh, the <gasps> sacred breath as she described it yeah exact- i cleanse this microphone this microphone can only be used for <laughs> just, good okay <laughs> <laughs> we, oh we can't be mean anymore now oh no <laughs> oh you we have to stop the podcast i know now. i know you've done it paris you've I done know, it I, f- I fucked everything up well wow, let's prove that's... that wrong by immediately going into the, the the next one and the last one because apparently the spirit element even though it's described that you can cleanse things with it she doesn't tell you how Maybe maybe you just like swallow it. Sure. And like as well, it goes through your body, it gets cleansed. Poop the crystal out and poop only the crystal out, yeah. All right, so the last one is the earth element. How do you clean something with the earth element, Paris? I mean, be like the cutest of animals, the chinchilla, and get a bowl of volcanic dust or earth and toss your rock in it like a chinchilla. No, uh, no, Damn you it. just throw in the fucking dirt overnight. <laughs> <laughs> or Aww. for a week, as she says. She says, just throw that shit in the, in the dirt for a week, and even though it looks physically dirty, it'll be spiritually clean. But, like, dude, it already came from the dirt somewhere. It already no, because, came no, from, like... Well, no, because it, this is like put, giving your crystal a vacation. It needs to rest <laughs> sometimes. Wait, does she really and, use those words? Yes, your crystal needs to rest, and it likes being in the earth where it came from, so you stick it in the dirt for a week, and it will be cleansed from all of your spiritual stuff that you've been putting uh, it through, apparently. All right, like, so let's just talk about how, obviously, 
all this all these details are fucking bullshit but like i i understand that meditation meditation itself can be very helpful but it seems like and has been proven to affect people's well-being in a positive way but like all this crystal shit has been disproven many times and i just can't believe people continue to kind of she adhere to this. she has some like she says a couple times like oh there's been scientific studies that prove no. that uh, these crystals work and there's like a little it's bit of bibliography true. in the back that she references and one of them she like says oh Doctor Emoto did a study that said that these crystals work and I looked at the bibliography and it's not like from a scientific journal it's just some Japanese dude named Masaru Emoto that wrote messages from water the first pictures of frozen water crystals yeah and that's apparently her major scientific fucking source yeah i mean like it's really powerful to say oh this study but the the details of how a study was performed are really uh necessary to know before you can begin to say whether a study was good or bad um it wasn't published in any any academic anything i mean i probably i probably should have done more work to like find um the stuff I was talking about that uh, did work with crystals and found that that was fucking bogus. I mean, J- like we've talked about James Randi before, but he's a famous skeptic and he has some pretty classic bits where he like invites, um, you know, crystal healers on and, and, it, and he, but the thing is he, uh, he sets up, you know, the little mini experiment so that they don't know yeah. which rock is in which bag and, like, they can never choose the right one. And it's just like, come on, man. I don't well, know. Well, it, in the end, it seems like it, this whole book just seems like j- if it feels right, then you did the right thing. If it, yeah. if it feels like you did the right thing and you chose the right crystal and did the right thing, then it is. And, like, yeah. I can kind of understand yeah. that with this being, like, a meditation because the rest of this book is just, like, guided meditations. I don't know if you're supposed to be reading the book as you're meditating, which seems counterintuitive. Yeah. But there's, I'm- like, there's, it, it's there's like seven different guided meditations with like scenes she drags you through like the first one for your base chakra is like talking about like literally walking into a lake and feeling yourself be weightless and floating in the thing um and then walking out once you feel like very comfortable my favorite one is the like the second one for like the sacral chakra where she describes like walking into I, hold on let me because i have the book in front of me over here yeah. uh it, and she talks about uh like it's a fire like a fire scene that's surrounded by uh a carnelian crystal because that's apparently the crystal that's good for your sacral chakra Mm -hmm. and then she describes oh just ask the crystal what you should be doing with your life and then the crystal will tell you what to do so i'm imagining someone sitting there you know (laughs) meditating deeply breathing deeply and they, they they go to this mental place where there's a fire and it's surrounded by these crystals and they go Oh, uh, Mr. Carnelian Crystal, what should I be doing with my life? Where do I need to be going? And in their head, they just hear, stop buying fucking crystals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if, you know, they start buying into this. The crystal is alive. It needs to go on vacation. And they, like, start buying clothes for it and, like, a little <laughs> doll bed. And it, like, I need has to dress my crystal up. It's cold. It's and, cold yeah, out here. It's like, honey, the crystal's cold. Get him some hot cocoa. No, use the doll <laughs> mug. It was the doll mug, yeah. It's... I'm going to make myself a hot crystal elixir by uh... just dumping a crystal in hot chocolate overnight. Yeah, so, so for me, it's like, like I said, you know, meditation is fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not, oh, yeah, like, that's fine. That's, that's not great. bunk that's science useful. at all. But mixing it, I think the dangerous thing is telling people that crystals are alive um, and that they can heal any diseases that you have and that, you know, this is a an okay thing to do if you have health problems i just yeah ugh, lot, that's dangerous uh, to after me after the all the guided meditations there's like a thing section that's like oh the spiritual healing properties of this crystal or the physical properties and a lot of the physical property ones is like this one's good for anyone that has like blood diseases it'll promote blood flow or this one's good for digestive stuff it, it'll help heal any digestive problems or this one's good for if you have vision problems hold your clear quartz crystal and it'll like open oh, because it opens your brain perception it helps your regular vision too and so, so i guess no gonna have to do that chris because you know i know Uh, yeah because if only (gasps) i had done that i might not be legally blind anymore yeah right and like you know your doctor had just given you a clear quartz crystal and told you to fucking put it on your brow chakra all this could have been avoided and the thing is like if you want to say like oh use this as like a mental focus to think help you think about things and meditate on them then okay it's fine. fine but like to say that it's really 
definitely going to help you with your physical ailments, then uh, no, that's not that. No, that's no, dangerous. And, and dude, like this is this is. So I used to live in Salem for a while, and like this is one of those things that I that would just make me incredibly upset all the time. And and one of the reasons that I hated living there was that there's just like crystals in every other store, and every there's like psychics on every other store, and. I mean, I literally one day I was in, I was in this store. It's like one of those stupid crystal witch shops, but I would go there because they, they had the best selection of incense in town. Okay. The best, the cheapest. I know that like, I just like incense. Like that's, it's not, hey, because, there's nothing wrong with that. Like they, I love, they, they, I just love the smell of it. Like I love, you don't have, I don't know. you don't have to justify that. They're covering oh, no, their I'm, bases. I'm just saying like, but I would hate, like I'd hate going there because it had all this other kitschy shit and I would hear over here, these weird conversations. And one day, um, I overheard one of the shopkeepers helping someone pick out a wand because they sold wands oh yeah crystal wands are a thing that are mentioned in this book and too I was like, like crystal tipped wands what the fuck and and it was like i overheard them and it was like well you know um i'm interested in a wand okay well which which one is calling to you like what what are you going to be using it for and then the next time i went in there I overheard a different shopkeeper helping a different person pick out a crystal to help her daughter with autism or yep. something. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, these people are fucking charlatans. Like, I just, I don't know. For me, it's just, you go over that line of like, like you said, you know, oh, trying to guide your meditation with like a crystal, you know, because it's something that's part of your, it's, you know, not part of your regular life. It'll, it'll help you physically separate yourself and you know and meditate fine but like adding all this other shit on it like oh it's gonna cure your cancer and fucking cure your daughter's autism it like that just that steps over a line for me and i think it's dangerous that that people believe these things and it's it's really too bad that people like kate thomas or tomas or whatever who are clearly people who should know better are peddling this kind of stuff to people yeah that I is agree. really concerning to me that's like predatory and i yeah, can't say I can't say I agree with that. Apparently, she's making bank off it if she's charging oh, yeah. two fifty a fucking reading or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much my uh, book report on crystal healing. <laughs> it pe- honestly, it seems to be just like yo, just do whatever just, as long as it, yeah. you feel right about it. Then it doesn't even matter. Just choose whatever rock you fucking want. At one point, she even describes amber as being helpful for some things, and she acknowledges like this ain't even a fucking crystal, but it works. Which kind of just threw the whole thing out the window for me even more when she was like, ah, it's not even really crystal, but it'll still work fine. Yeah, because so so it's like whether it's yeah, because amber is uh, it's um, sap. It's, it's sap, just yeah, like it's... fossilized sap. Yeah. I'm sure she thinks that's alive, too, because it's full of things that were once alive, like really cool feathered dinosaur tails. But, yep. I mean, all right. Well, that's... that's that's my section of this mini episode, Paris. I did my <laughs> yeah. reading here. All right. So, so thank you for uh, getting through Chakra Crystals by Kate Thomas, Tomas, whatever, because uh, that sounds awful. Uh, so for my part of this mini uh we're going to do two, two, two truths and a lie. So I came I found uh, six categories of books, genres of books, and I found two real summaries and one I made up. And uh, Chris is going to try to guess which one is fake. Um, so, Chris, did you? I'm so excited for this. Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I did it little by little over the last week. Um, so, do you want um, just the summary or like the title and the author or? I I, I want the title and the summary, and that's pretty much okay. it. All right, so... Actually, you know what? I want to hear the author names you made up, so just, <laughs> just give me title, author, and the brief summary. Okay, um... All right, hang on. Sorry, I'm just making sure I have fake authors for all of them. If I you don't, I, then I we'll I, just... Uh, fuck, one's missing. Hang on. Um... <laughs> I'm just going to judge based on how long you type. <laughs> uh... I think they all have. Because it's funny because I made up fake titles and authors and then was like, I think I've gone too far. Like, I think think this is too much. You're going to will them into being if you're not careful. I know. I got actually, yeah, I got to. Fuck, I don't have any crystals anymore. Um, Yeah, you could have really helped. That could have helped you make things in reality. All right. But do I get to choose the categories beforehand? Are you just going to go down a list? Um, You can choose the order in which you'd like to do them. So um, yeah, let's hit me with the categories and I'll pick my poison. (laughs) Category one, child self-help books. (laughs) Okay. Category two, cli-fi, science fiction, but about climate change. Oh, okay. Category three, Amish romance. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Category four. Ero Goro Nonsensu. Uh, it's erotic or grotesque nonsense. It's a weird Japanese form of fiction. Oh, good. Yep. Um, children's picture books and inspirational medical romance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these are good. Yeah, I got, a, good. I got a good mix. Got a good mix going. I was actually really proud uh, of myself because I had to do yeah. some internet sleuthing. Wow. <laughs> I'm pr- okay, hit me with the child picture books first. Okay, all right. Um, all right, children's picture books. Uh, sorry, you said you just want the title and the summary? Uh, whatever you want to do. Whatever you... Just, just hit me with these. Okay. Dragons love tacos. Dragons uh, love tacos. Uh, <laughs> they love chicken tacos, beef tacos, great big tacos, and teeny tiny tacos. So if you want to lure a bunch of dragons to your party, you should definitely serve tacos. Buckets and buckets of tacos. Unfortunately, where there are tacos, there is also salsa. And if a dragon accidentally eats spicy salsa, oh boy, you're in red hot trouble. The award winning team behind those darn squirrels has created an unforgettable. <laughs> <laughs> laugh what? until salsa comes out of your nose tail of new friends and the perfect snack oh fuck okay okay, okay. That's, that's, one. that's the first one I'm, holy I'm shit cry- i'm crying um keep going oh my god okay. get ready for the next one uh, <laughs> all right so the second one the second one's called i'd really like to eat a child <laughs> <laughs> He's tired of bananas. Today, he'd like to eat a child. A scrawny little crocodile wants the opportunity to bite off more than he can chew. But he's smaller than he thinks. And the little girl he chooses for his first meal puts him in his place. She picks him up and tickles his tummy. The little crocodile is going to have to eat a lot of bananas and grow a lot bigger before he can add children to his menu. Simple yet hilarious artwork brings this droll story to life. (laughs) Oh, my Lord. Okay. Oh, it's the last one. (laughs) Don't kill those cats. (laughs) <laughs> I can't no, There's no way Holy shit Okay The old farmer and his wife Sure hate cats When the new kid in town Discovers that his uh, Kitten might be in danger He goes on an adventure To stop that mean old couple Join Menes As his prayer to the sky gods Imitates it Initiates some spooky cat antics <laughs> What the f- Okay <laughs> Yeah Yep. Oh, okay, like, I thought I, I definitely had you with the second one, because, like, that sounds like a Paris thing to write, but then this this one can't be... Oh, okay, so I'm thinking the dragon taco one is definitely real. For That seems like somehow the most realistic children's picture book out of the bunch, but then I can't decide I want to eat a child and don't kill that cat. <laughs> is yeah. Those are children's books? I'd really like to eat a child and then don't kill those cats. <laughs> <laughs> So which one is fake? Oh, okay. Dragons um, love tacos. I'd really like to eat a child and don't kill those cats. I'm going to say I'd really like to eat a child is fake because it sounds a little similar to Swamplandia somehow. And that I think you pulled from that to create that false summary. Okay. Uh, do you want to know now whether or not you're right Yeah, or wrong? no. Yeah, give me the answer at, at, after every category, after my guess. You fucking wrong. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fuck um, you. Did you- <laughs> I okay. I made up "Don't Kill Those Cats" based on "The Cats of Ulthar" by H.P. Lovecraft. Oh. <laughs> I thought that I, sounded more realistic than yeah. "I would like to eat a child." Yeah, I really like to eat a child is real, and I was like, "There's no fucking way." Yeah, it's real. It's ridiculous. Holy fuck! All right, we're yeah. off to a fantastic start. <laughs> Hit- yeah. I was really Hit me proud with of- the Cli-Fi Paris, uh, uh, dude. I was really proud of myself because I was like really struggling to come up with one for this and I was like I don't know oh I think because I was reading something that was Lovecraft related and I was like oh my god that's right he wrote a story about cats and I didn't um I for some reason I had never read the cats of Ulthar and I didn't realize how short it was so I just sat here and read it and was like oh man I'm gonna turn this into a children's book and I did oh, it and I'm so proud of myself <laughs> that was really good yeah. okay hit me with the cli-fi uh cli-fi okay so I want to just uh, just a disclaimer here I think it's really great that people are writing fiction about climate change, but Cli-Fi just sounds so fucking dumb. Like, they could have named it something else. Jesus Christ. All right. (laughs) All right. Uh, The first one... (coughs) Sorry. The first one is called Oryx and Crake. Uh, Oryx and Crake is at once an unforgettable love story and a compelling vision of the future. Snowman, known as Jimmy before mankind was overwhelmed by a plague, 
is struggling to survive in a world where he may be the last human, while mourning the loss of his best friend, Crake, and the beautiful and elusive Oryx, whom they both loved. In search of answers, Snowman embarks on a journey, with the help of the green-eyed children of Crake, through the lush wilderness that was so recently a great city, until powerful corporations took mankind on an uncontrolled genetic engineering ride. Oryx and Crake projects us into a near future that is both all too familiar and beyond our imagining. Okay, all, all right. right. Uh, the next one is What's called it? Melt. In this jarring ergotic novel, Ariel has only seven days before her colony's ancient land slip from the face of Wales forever. Can she convince her people to move, or will they fall to the sea, forsaken to the deep ones therein? Okay. All right. All right. Uh, the next one is 500 parts per million. The year is 2050. The weather is devastating. Mark, a young man working in London's financial district, is summoned to a business meeting in Amsterdam and finds his life changed forever. Washed up on an embankment after a huge storm surge overwhelms Amsterdam's sea defenses, he sets sail on a dangerous adventure that takes him from the rugged Cornish coastline of southwest England to the floating city in Rotterdam, then across the Atlantic to the east coast of the United States. On his travels, he encounters an oddball companion, GM Joe, and together what? they sail up the P.D. River to the town of... Jamesville in drought-stricken South Carolina, where Mark gets friendly with Constance, the mayor's daughter. But Jamesville has plenty of problems of its own, not just drought, as Mark soon discovers. 500 Parts Per Million is based on the contemporary environmental issue of global warming, a tale of life, love, and survival in a warmed-up world. It's about a planet where the weather has gone haywire, the technologies we rely on don't work, and where communities face new threats and have to relearn forgotten skills to survive. Okay, I'm going to go with Melt is the one you made up because it's the shortest description. Oh, God damn it, you're right. Oh, good. I, but it was really good, actually. I totally believe that and now, one. Well, I kind of want to write that book now. Like, I made oh, yeah. that I made that summary and was like, that'd be fucking sick. I should write That's that. That's not a bad one, actually. Yeah, I would. I would, I might be re interested. Okay, so I got one out of two so far. Uh, hit me with the Dude, wait, did you, did you, like, hear... That the fucking companion in that last book is called GM Joe, and they sail yeah. up the PD River. Yeah, like, that's. What? I, I was trying. I, oh, <laughs> I was laughing pretty hard. So, Hit uh, me with the Iro Goru stuff next. Iro Goru, not Tetsu. Okay, um, so if you're not familiar, or are you familiar with this genre? I'm. F I I'm familiar. <laughs> okay. All right. The first one is called Lovely Feathers. Ayumi is tired of her husband, Genzo. She never wanted to marry him as it was, but his constant sexual advances of late have pushed her to the edge. When he brings Ayumi a pet parrot, though, she is delighted. She spends more and more time with Omu and falls in love with her new pet. Eventually, she decides she must become a bird so she and Omu can escape her husband and live happily ever after. But at what cost? Is her parrot suit enough, or must her husband die? Um, okay. All right, second one. Dance, Kremlin Palace. Dance, Kremlin Palace, is a comedic satire of communist Russia and Russian culture told through a series of inter interconnected short stories, though it doesn't really concern itself too much with facts or history beyond stereotypes. In other words, the comic is really about how we don't have a clue about what Russia, or by extension any foreign culture, is really like. The stories include a Russian roulette game, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev with magic powers, and of course, a lot of graphic sex and violence. Oh, good. All right. The last one is Superconductive Brains, Parataxis. <laughs> The ma this manga presents different stories settled in a future world in which biomechanoids of any kind are created for every purpose. All the stories, through different angles and in a somewhat bizarre fashion, explore the same theme. Are they mere machines, or do they dream of electric sheep? Oh, this one's hard. You did a really good job. Wow. <laughs> I'm yeah. impressed with your ability to like really embody each of these categories here. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad that, I'm glad that I did oh, a good job. Oh, shit. Uh, I, I believe dance Kremlin thing is it sounds Japanese as heck. I'm going to go with the third one is the one you made up. Oh, uh, so superconductive brains, parataxis. Yes, yes. You're wrong. Shit. <laughs> Which one was the one you made up? Lovely feathers. Oh, wow. One I totally bu I bought that one totally. <laughs> yes, I'm so good at this. I'm so glad. I would also read that book. That sounds like a Haruki Murakami book to it me. It sounds ridiculous, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I kind of... um. This category was hard because I don't know. My guess is just that, like, maybe a lot of these books are banned in a lot of places, so I couldn't really find a lot of examples. I just read, like, the Wikipedia page and, like, found what I could, so it was really tough. I'm glad that that one you was You completely successful. fooled me. You completely Excellent. fooled me. I had no... Yes. I, that was the one that was like, oh, that's definitely the real one. And, like, I would totally watch that movie. 
Me too. I t- it's, it literally sounds like a Haruki Murakami book to me. Sounds like it. Yeah, it's great. All right. Awesome. Uh, uh, so what do we have left? We, we have, have the uh, child ins- self-help books. Yep. Inspirational medical romance and Amish romance. <laughs> You know what? Let's do a romance one right now. Let's hit me with the Amish romance. Okay, Amish romance. Um, <clears throat> just so everyone knows, these these are like, these are all real. Like there are thousands of books under each of these types, like maybe millions. It's terrifying. Um, Amish romance. All right, so we got uh, Pennsylvania Duchess. <laughs> when, a curi- <laughs> <I'm already laughs> when a curious man arrives in New Wilmington claiming to be a duke from an old Amish sect in Europe, the whole town is awash with rumors. Is he really a duke? Is he even Amish? Does he truly love God? Kind-hearted Miriam takes pity on the stranger and befriends him. When he suddenly proposes to Miriam, though, she has a terrifying choice to make. Should she believe this man and embark on a new life in a European Amish sect, or is he really the devil in disguise? Oh, All right. ooh. Second one. <laughs> oh, I can't even get it out. <laughs> you know what's funny is I actually practiced reading all of these before the sh- yesterday, and I was like, I got this. I'm not going to laugh. And I, like, cried during the first one. Okay, <laughs> okay. keep going. All right. Room on the porch swing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, uh, yeah. Ooh, that sounds sexy. Yeah, it's great. Um, All right. <clears throat> Laura Real or Ra- Real, yeah, is no stranger to heartache. Less than a year after her mother's death, Laura finds herself burying another loved one, her best friend, Sevilla, who has died after a brief and sudden illness. Laura feels heartbroken and alone, but her pain is nothing compared to that of Alan, the husband Sevilla has left behind. He now faces a life so different from the one he imagined, plus a baby to care for on his own. When Laura offers to help Alan with baby Molly, he jumps at the opportunity until a permanent solution can be found. She can do anything to lend a hand to Alan and to honor her best friend's memory. Rudy, Laura's boyfriend, is initially supportive of her plan, but the more time Laura spends with Alan, the more jealous and frustrated Rudy seems to become. As Laura and Alan face hardships together, their friendship takes a surprising yet comforting turn, and she discovers an attraction she's never felt with Rudy. Would falling for Alan betray the people she cares about most, or would denying those feelings betray her heart? This latest installment in the Amish Homestead series returns us to Lancaster County, home of the beloved Reels, where family strength and advice from a new friend may help Laura find God's direction. Oh, okay. That's yep. that's a pretty good one. All right, what's the last one? <laughs> oh, the wedding quilt bride. Oh. <laughs> Widow Rebecca Mast returns to her Amish community with her son and a dream to own a quilt shop. <laughs> Carpenter Daniel King is determined to help Rebecca and revive their childhood friendship. But as he bonds with her son, Rebecca's afraid the secret she's been keeping will be revealed. Can Daniel convince Rebecca he's a man she can trust and love? Oh, those are all totally believable. Yeah, they're all, and the titles are just like, they're all. Room on the Porch s- Swing is dope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's like, oh man. All right, but s- sidle on over, honey. We're going to get yeah. down to business on the Porch Swing. <laughs> Okay, uh, I almost think that one's the fake one because I don't believe anyone in Amish country is named Rudy somehow. Like, it doesn't sound like an Amish name to me, but I could be wrong <laughs> and just prejudging. I'm going to guess Room on the Porch Swig. You're wrong. Shit. <laughs> I made up Pennsylvania Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that was another one that completely fooled me. It sounds totally believable. Yeah, I guess I'm, I guess I'm really good at, like, faking other... Pennsylvania Duchess is a really good title, too. Dude, I can't believe no one's... If they haven't written that book, I should just write it. Like, I should just... Holy shit, we got, we, we got to start this business here, Paris. You got something going here. Yeah, dude. So, Amish Romance, I, first of all, was like, okay, that's a joke. Like, that's not a real thing. And then I saw how many, like, seemingly hundreds or thousands of books there were in that. And, and there's, there's no disturbing. electricity in Amish country. All they have time is to read and fuck, dude. Like, that that's, yeah, so exactly. seems so, up their alley. Okay, so, so all the books are about that. They're all, like, love, like, shit. Like, there's no, no, like, <laughs> there's nothing. All I that love, love shit. Yeah, it's all romantic intrigue. And also everything is about quilts. Quilts and brides. Brides and quilts. <laughs> quilts and brides. Brides quilting quilts with brides on them quilting quilts. Like My wedding I'm, dress is one giant quilt. I'm very hot right dude, now. Can we please I'm get not, this ceremony over? I'm not kidding. So many of the titles or summaries had the words bride and quilt in them. It was <laughs> like it was a joke someone set up for me on Goodreads. And I was like. Amish quilt brides. <laughs> the dude, new reality show. <laughs> yeah, it's very. Co- I don't understand. That you can't actually bride broadcast because it uses electricity so it's just yeah. a bunch of people in pennsylvania doing it <laughs> yep 
<laughs> All right. Uh, hit me with child self-help books. <laughs> okay. Uh, child self-help books. <clears throat> Who cares about elderly people? <laughs> <laughs> Who fucking gives a shit? <laughs> Readers learn that older people and young people have a lot in common and that there are many ways they can help each other. Um, all right. They both have trouble drinking the soup cleanly without spilling it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, the second one is the No Cussing Club. 14-year-old McKay Hatch has been the target of bullying at school and intense cyberbullying as well, all because he took a stand to tell his friends, don't cuss. Here, in McKay's own story, see how the No Cussing Club he started at his high school caught the attention of the world and quickly grew to include more than 20,000 members in every state and more than 30 countries. Discover how McKay did it, how he persevered against severe peer pressure, how he is making a difference in thousands of people's lives, and how you can too. The No Cussing Club includes examples from the thousands of emails McKay has received. The tons of tips and tools included make the book enjoyable, interactive, and a great handbook to help teens stand up to peer pressure, handle bullying and cyberbullying, and find ways to make a difference. All right, last one, please. Last one. Why isn't Fluffy moving? Oh. <laughs> oh. Why, why isn't Fluffy moving introduces the very difficult concept of pet death to young children. Five-year-old Lucy finds her pet cat, Fluffy, stiff and not breathing under her bed. She thinks Fluffy is playing a game, but her parents <laughs> must oh. explain that this is no game, and Fluffy is in fact passed on to the other side, where one day they will meet again. Recommended for children who have just gotten a pet, or whose pet may be nearing the end of its life. <laughs> just got one. You want to get it early? <laughs> out of the way. I know you really love this the puppy that you just got, but just letting you know, it's, it's going to suck later. It's going to die at some point, yeah. Like, especially when like it's probably going to be older anyway. Like, when it's a teenager, by that point, you really need to break the news so early. I don't know, man. Have you ever had fish? Those things die every two weeks. True, true. I have had. Okay, so I know for a fact the No Cussing Club is real. I oh, know. Really? I've seen that one. I've oh, seen fuck. that one. I wasn't. Yeah, I was worried about that because it also it sounded so ridiculous. Though I was like, yeah, it, it, it does. I if I hadn't known that, I probably would have selected that one. Wait, how did I, you? Know, I, uh, where did you hear about it? Uh, it, it was like a kind of famous, like a, like oh, a, really? a decade ago. Like uh, someone brought it up at like my Catholic school. I'm pretty sure oh, or something no. like that. Oh, um, I didn't I didn't realize how popular it was. It just sounded absurd. So I it's, picked it. it was fairly popular, I believe. I'm going to guess that. Uh, why isn't fluffing moving? <laughs> it's the fake one. Oh damn it! You're right. You're right. Oh good. Well, finally, I got one. <laughs> I thought I did a good job. The first one kind of. I almost chose that one because it was very brief and also like who cares about old people? <laughs> yeah, See, like could, a a Paris <laughs> title to me. I but. couldn't believe that somebody wrote that. I mean, obviously, it's it, it's a positive spin. You know, it's like supposed okay, to be okay. like, hey, don't be a you know, you should. Care. Yeah. Yeah. About but it sounds ridiculous yeah okay all right, all right last one all right good job good job um if i can oh, get yeah. half i'll be i'll be proud i think you can all right last one is inspirational medical romance which is another <laughs> of those genres that i'm like how how are there enough books to classify this as a genre but... as opposed to all the uninspirational downer ones out yeah there. yeah like here we are though um okay <laughs> the mystery healer of smoky mountain Mamie Granger is a young woman who lives at the base of the mountain. As a child, falling against a hot cooking pot, she burns the side of her face. Being teased at school and later stared at as an adult, Mamie remains living in isolation with her grandfather. Her one friend is a half-wolf dog rescued by her as a pup. Mamie would like a life similar to other young women, yet she feels all this will be denied her due to her facial deformity. Heading off to the base of the mountains to pick berries, she wanders up and becomes lost in the dark. When her pet disappears, Mamie is terrified and cries out to the Lord for help. A mysterious woman in white calls her name, then leads her to a large cabin on the plateau. Here she will meet a handsome man and the hidden surgeon who performs reconstruction operations unallowed in 1885. All right. All right. <clears throat> the next one. Romance after work. So it's romance colon after work. Okay. St. Dionysus Hospital is where two women named Allison and Kim need human companionship to balance their stressful and often traumatic working lives. Allison's working in a busy ER hospital department, notices Kim, an ER nurse, and strikes up a friendship that leads to a better understanding of each other and romance ensues. That was how they met. It's been two years since then. It was nothing but a friendship at first, but that's all it was meant to be. But life rarely goes the way people plan. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> Last one. All right. Vaccinated by love. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie was never vaccinated as a child. That just wasn't the Christian science way. 
At 18, though, she can make her own choices now when she secretly changes her major to nursing during her first year away from her family. Medical science has always been so fascinating compared to what the practitioners in her Christian science community embraced. Still, Marjorie loves God and wants to remain faithful to the Lord, even if she now believes in medical science. Just when she thinks she has sorted out her faith and career, Drake enters her life as a new teaching oh, no. assistant for her Anatomy and Physiology 1 class, challenging Marjorie's beliefs and heart even more. <laughs> when you said that, it made me think of the rapper Drake as somehow a character in this. <laughs> yeah, that's why I laughed a little bit because that's also what I pictured because it's like he, the only He decided to go to name. medical school. Okay, this one is another tough one. All three of them are totally believable. Oh, good, man. Good. I'm, glad. Um, I'm glad. All right. Uh, I think I found my calling, like writing fake book summaries. I don't know. Wow. Oh, this one's the toughest one, actually. I I think the last one is real. Okay. Uh, the, the, the other two, like. It could go either way. Vaccinated by love is such like I, I can't. You didn't make that one up. Uh, I'm gonna guess the first one about the facial burn girl is the made up one. Okay, is that your final answer? Yes. All right, you're wrong. Fuck. <laughs> I made up vaccinated by love. <laughs> you made up vaccinated by love. Yes. Wasn't it oh so my... good? Oh, God. oh shit! You're oh. really good at this, Paris. I... <laughs> I found a talent, a hidden talent. Ma- I hidden my hid- my stupid hidden talent is apparently mimicking, <laughs> mimicking styles of writing. Oh my god! Hello. I got one third of them. Oh man! Yeah. I, wow. I mean, two out of good six. Good job. Is good. I, I I I'm applauding you right now thank for you, your fantastic you. efforts take, on that. Taking you, a bow in my room. I, I expected you to do well, and you exceeded those expectations. Dude. Um. Okay. So here's the other funny part: is I thought you were gonna get this one, or at least I thought you were gonna know one of them was real because the mystery healer of Smoky Mountain is that one of those book covers I sent you the other day. And it's oh, how wow. I, I discovered. Guess I wasn't paying attention. And it's how I discovered this inspirational medical romance because it was printed on the cover. Remember, I was like, "Oh, you can barely all see it, right. but it says." All insp- right. And just so, so you all know, the mystery healer of Smoky Mountain by Crystal Mary Lindsay has an insane cover. It's like this sort of low res image of a cabin, and then there's these like a guy's face and a woman's face, like pasted on top of it but they're clearly not from the same photo session or anything like (laughs) and then in the lower left corner there's uh just this like sort of cartoonish drawing of like an american flag and confederate flag crossed so it's just like this bizarre i don't know hodgepodge of shit Uh, yeah that's the that's hey man art costs money you just got to throw that shit together in photoshop before you submit it to amazon self-publishing or whatever i guess (sighs) yeah I also, All right. Well, yeah. All right. You, unless you have playing. anything to say, that was a fantastic uh, game, Paris. That that was <laughs> quality content from from you. I have to say. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. I I enjoyed doing it. Uh, I guess maybe, I guess I'm good at faking uh, literary. Next styles. time around, maybe I'll attempt it, or maybe you're just so fucking good at it that you'll just keep trying to fool me. But no, like, you did you did a great job when you had to come up with those um those like food mystery books. All right. I, that yeah, was yeah, hilarious. I did that. All right, so yeah, that was. This has been like our little mini episode, is sort of like a palate cleanser in between some of the other books. Just some light fun for us, you know, yeah. trying to trick each other, I suppose. And um, so coming up next, we have uh, the next episode is going to be, I think, this double feature book that I was given at a cookout on Saturday. Because um, <laughs> I don't even know how it happened. I was just talking about terrible book club i think uh because i was just meeting uh one of my friends brought his new girlfriend so we were all you know getting to know each other and um uh noah my friend who lives on the second floor of my building was like oh i got a book for you and he ran inside and gave it to me and i was like the hell it's a double feature fantasy novel so it's like this little book and one side is one story then you flip it over um, in the other direction, and it's another story on the other side, which Ooh, is like tricksy. Kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Um, and it's really short. Like I read one of the stories yesterday in like two hours, um, and I'll read the other one today. It's it's like half the length, and then uh, I'll hand it off to Chris, and hopefully we'll pump out another episode pretty soon. Um, I'm excited for that one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I read one of the stories, and it was like you know it has some classic fantasy issues but it's not it's not that bad uh i think the other one's gonna be way worse though based on the title and the cover of that one like all right good yeah good yeah i, I think we'll that... get to some quality shit again yeah, getting yeah. back on terrible book club brain <laughs> yeah seriously um yeah i don't know if i have any other terrible book club news um other than some Our of the usual been, 
someone has been commenting on our website and I didn't notice. So now I have to go back and like actually respond to them and apologize for being an asshole. Um, I didn't notice because I like the Facebook connect connection to the website. Like the alerts are just not good on Facebook sometimes. And I just didn't realize it was happening. And I was just like on our website trying to, f I forget what I was trying to figure out like the number of the episode we were on. And I was like, Oh, it says there's a comment here. Uh, and then I noticed there were comments on like a couple of episodes. So, um, sorry to Dende, I think is your name. Uh, sorry. I missed <laughs> oh, from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, awesome. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so it's a character from Dragon Sorry, Ball Z's comments. name, so that'd be oh. pretty funny. I mean, maybe you know people. People put it could be a real names. name too. Who knows? Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, Patreon exists. Check it out. We got some cool content on there. Um, well, once again, thank you, Dari, for giving us money. Yes, thank you, Dari. Quickly for sliding our, that one in there <laughs> for being our patron as contractually obligated. Um, yes. I don't know. Do we have anything else on the burner? For oh yeah, we got that crazy Trent Reznor book, which which we should probably read. Yeah, that's good. That, we're going to leave it at that for a sense of mystery about that. But <laughs> yeah. there is a there is an uh, quote unquote auto, uh, not an auto, but a biography that we might read about Trent Reznor that looks uh, insane. insane. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, oh, I think maybe just briefly I'll talk about how I recently discovered how bad the writing is in Fifty Shades of Grey. So I've never read the book. You know, I we've talked about reading it for the show but we don't think that we would do that because so many people have um and i don't know i was just like looking for last the other night and i think somebody i know had posted online like oh 50 terrible lines from 50 shades of gray and i was like oh okay i'll i'll read those because i don't know anything about this book holy fuck the writing is i mean it's like middle school level i, I oh yeah i was so shocked by how bad it was i just can't imagine how that became so popular i mean it's it's still blowing my mind like right now i've several read a days paragraph later. or two and it's definitely some low tier stuff yeah and i just i can't believe how famous that lady became and how famous the series became it got movies made out i mean it just i mean i guess it just tells me like maybe i don't have to try that hard like maybe i should just set the bar popularity lower. does not like, equal quality no i know but it's it's still surprising to me that people could get through something like yeah. that and think, uh -huh. oh, this is good. This deserves my money. I enjoy this. I mean, some of the descriptions were just, oh, man. I, I mean, I sorry. I should have just pulled up the uh, the site, but it was, oh, God. I just, I'm well, still, like, reeling from it. Like, all how? things to consider for the next couple of episodes of Terrible Book Club, which will be coming at you soon. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to, uh, trying to get these out a little more regularly. Um... We'll All see. right, but yeah. Speak, uh, oh, I, 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 one last thing. Sorry, sorry, Chris. Yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say like I kind of have to bounce pretty soon, so oh, I'm trying yeah. to wrap this up. Oh, but. that's true. Yeah. Uh, one thing I just wanted to uh, shout out one of uh, my friend's podcast that I forgot to mention last time. Um, it's called Antiques Freaks, and I love it. Um, so it's all about antiques. Which sounds really boring and dumb, but the hosts are fucking hilarious. Uh, one of them is actually my friend D-Ray, who I went to high school with uh, long ago. And she's hilarious. And she has her friend Ken on, and he's also super funny. And they... So they go through these episodes, they explain certain types of antiques. Like, they have an episode about bone china or whatever, or jadeite or whatever. And so it's really cool because you get to learn about this like insane thing that I like I would never know anything about antiques but it's so funny god they have an episode about mercury check that one out that shit is great I will definitely um, be that sounds interesting to me god, I might is, listen to that on the train on the way over where should. I'm headed it is so funny um I frequently have it on at work and then like am laughing to myself in my in my cubicle in the hallway which is where my desk is it's in a hallway um and i often have to be like okay i gotta tone it down it's super funny check them out antiques freaks um i think they're on i don't know they're on a bunch of different services um yeah check that out i forgot to mention that last time um i've right, also awesome. really been into goose buds lately which is a podcast where three dudes read go back and read all of the goosebumps books <laughs> And it's really funny. Uh, so yeah, there you go. We should maybe do one of those eventually too, just to. Oh yeah. those were, I remember those being some funny stuff. Sometimes well, the, the funny thing is, I loved the Fear Street series. I didn't like Goosebumps. I picked up Goosebumps and said, "This shit's for kids." When I was like seven, <laughs> and then like moved on to Fear Street, which was like for older kids or whatever. Oh. Um, and I loved the shit out of those books. So I'd love to go back and read them and see how terrible they were. Yeah, maybe um, we'll do Fear Street instead. To dude, like... I would love to reread Fear Street. Oh man, that'd be yeah, so great. Yeah, do that. Yeah, maybe All we'll right. do that. 
well, if if that's all we got to say, then that might be the closer on this little mini-sode here. Yeah, this is your uh, Memorial Day mini-sode brought to you by a day off for Paris and Chris. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll, I guess I'll see you next time, Paris. All right. See you next time, Chris. Bye. 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 Bye.